In this part of the lecture, I'm going to continue from part one that we discussed earlier. And uh, at this point, we're going to go into the actual research steps very briefly. There are three particular research steps that you'll need to consider. The first one is selecting your sources, determining what resources you're going to use. Then the second one, it's actually uh, doing the actual searching and then evaluating. Sometimes I refer to this as uh, looking for gold. So the first step here is selecting. Selecting is to choose. So first thing here is selecting. Selecting the information, selecting the sources. To select here, we mean to choose in preference because of something special quality or value. So we are looking through stuff here and like we said, there's a lot of information out there in the web. And overall, it depends on how you value it or how you look at it. You could say that everything is valuable and useful and so on. But yet, there are certain things that might be more valuable than others. So you have to select where you're going to do your searching. Or you select, like in the case of the donuts, for, uh, for example, here. You uh, choose one in preference because of special quality or special value to it. There are different resources that you can utilize before you go to the World Wide Web. Most likely you'd go directly to Google and search something and then go to Wikipedia and find the resources. That's okay if you just want to, to find something very quickly to get started. However, it's not recommended that you just do a Google search for your research right away. Uh, the first thing that you do is go to uh, encyclopedias. It could be Encyclopedia Britannica, it could be an encyclopedia like even Wikipedia out there and so on. But you basically find general information about the topic that you're researching. Then you'd uh, go to the library catalog. That's another resource for finding what books and resources and journals and databases are available on that particular topic. And then you locate those books from the library catalog or online or through other places. You can evaluate magazines, journals, and we'll get into the difference here between journals and magazines in a moment. And then periodical indexes. If the topic is too difficult, you didn't find all the stuff through these steps, you would look also through periodical in indexes that I'll discuss in a moment. And then further, more newspapers. And then finally, you just go and do a broad search as to what else you could find on the internet. As we'll see here in these lessons, if you go through all of these tools here, you'll not really need to go and do a search on the World Wide Web or Google something right away to waste your time on it because there is so much valuable stuff out there in these sources before you get to the World Wide Web. So the key here is determining what sources do we select for our research? So there are different things that you can select for your research. Um, uh, and like I said earlier, encyclopedias would be the starting point. Their encyclopedias are collections of short factual entries, very often written by different con uh, contributors who are knowledgeable about that topic. An easier way to understand this it would be, for example, in Wikipedia. A lot of people all over the world, they contribute to the article that is written there. And they could be knowledgeable in that topic or not so knowledgeable about that specific topic. But it's basically various contri contributors. Now, uh, the difference between Wikipedia, for example, and uh, Encyclopedia Britannica is that Wikipedia, it can be modified by anyone. I could go in there and any of the articles change something. And if you happened to read the article when I changed it to incorrect information, then you have incorrect information. Uh, Encyclopedia Britannica, it's more monitored and it's uh, uh, the scholars and different collaborating teams that ha it has to be proofread, it has to be evaluated, it has to be published. It's a slower process, but yet it's more monitored. So the key here is encyclopedias, they'll give you a general idea about your topic. Then um, you can look at books. The books, they synthesize the information on the specific topic. 
and uh, we have a variety of books at the Karen Maslin Library. Uh, not all the books that you see in the bookshelves are the books available for you for your research. There are also a lot of ebooks, electronic books available that we'll show and cover in a little bit here, uh, probably in the next lesson. Then um, there are uh, magazines and journals that I was talking earlier in that diagram. The magazines and journals, um, they, can, they are diverse, they cover diverse topics of uh, popular interests and current events. Journals usually are scholarly articles that are written by people in the academic and professional fields. There is usually an editorial board that reviews that article. It's not like Reader's Digest articles that uh, somebody has written a short word uh, or short stories. Uh, those journals, they can be multiple pages, like 10, 15 pages, and so on, without pictures, without much uh, general stuff, but it's very focused in that specific field. And then you have periodical indexes. Periodical indexes, uh, you don't see them very often anymore, but it's basically a listing of articles out there with a brief summary, uh, like uh, articles from magazines, journals, and so on, but they don't give you the full text. So it's basically just an index that points to citations. Think of it very similar to like when you do a Google search and you have the links that show up on the Google search. And those links, they have just a little brief explanation right below it. But then if you clicked on these links, you couldn't get to them. It's just a pointer to say that there's an article there with this title and this, uh, what it covers this specific topic, but then it's pretty much your job to find it. So they exist out there. If you're doing a, the, you'd say, why do they come in? Why are they, uh, what's the importance here? And the importance here is that if you're doing a research topic, a studying a research, a very complex research topic or a very difficult one, and there is not much written out there, at least you can tag down the article. So that's the point of the periodical indexes. So then there is also the library catalog and the World Wide Web, and that's what you'd evaluate and check out eventually. So the catalog, the library catalog, you'll see it in a moment here, but it's basically a way for you to find and search what the library has. Uh, you're just trying to locate a book. In the er older days here, there used to be a, a card catalog, and that's why it was called card catalog, because it had all these cards that would list where the books are and what books are. It was indexed in a certain order, and then uh, it'll tell you where a book is located and that type of stuff. Now, of course, everything is electronic. You can access and search those items, but it's items that the library owns on that specific topic. And then there's, of course, the World Wide Web or the Internet as we refer to it. And uh, that has all types of information. Keep in mind that not everything that is published on the web it's the information that you can utilize and that may be useful for your research paper. So, uh, so far what we covered here that is the different types of sources that you can select. We discussed the encyclopedias, magazines, journals. We discussed the periodical indexes, very briefly of course, and then library catalog and the internet. So just a little bit um, different shading here b between popular magazines or popular resources and scholarly resources. Popular resources, you could uh, see magazines very similar to this. And then the scholarly ones, they'll be like the historian, for example, or the economist and so on. So popular magazines, usually they contain uh, many pho uh, photographs and advertisements the articles are usually shorter. It's like in the Reader's Digest and so on. And they are very summarized. In the scholarly journals, there are going to be pretty much no advertisements, not many pictures. 
Then you have uh, long and in-depth articles with uh, in-depth articles in a specific field. For example, the Journal of Medicine. It's not going to talk about the day-to-day the day -day issues. It's going to be more scientific research and things of that nature. So when you're doing research, the idea is, depending on your topic, you might want to look into scholarly journals. And that's why the faculty here, when they ask you to do a paper, they are looking for scholarly journals instead of you researching magazines. So that's briefly on deciding the selecting part of it. The selection, it's a, it's a, you have a variety of things. Like I said, you select from the encyclopedias, from the journals, from magazines, from other, um, you do a search on the library catalog, the online databases that the library here has, and then you check the, then finally the World Wide Web as the last thing. So the concept for this class is check the web, like Google search is basically last. Or you can check it in the beginning just to get a general idea, but don't base your research just on Google searches.